Hello! Welcome back to the Wintry Wyvern. As you might know, every class in D&D 5th edition received a few new options in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and the Druid is no exception. We've got a ton of new spells to go over, but first let's jump right into the first feature, Wild Companion. This feature gives Druid access to the Find Familiar spell, previously a spell only available to Wizards and Pact of the Chain Warlocks. It does have its differences. The creature is considered Fey instead of Beast for one, denoting a druid's relation to nature's magical inhabitants. A big plus is the casting time. While it takes other casters a full hour and components to summon a familiar, it only takes a druid one action to bring one forth with no material cost, making it a situational in-combat option. The downside to this readiness is a new time limit on how long your familiar sticks around. Instead of staying indefinitely, it's only around for a few hours. I think it's a handy addition for those druids who don't get much use of their wild shapes, offering a quick scout ahead or a spare help action in combat scenarios, notably for subclasses with weaker wild shape options. This is one of the rare instances where the feature didn't change at all from the Unearthed Arcana version, retaining every detail word for word. The next feature is one all prepared full casters have now, called Cantrip Versatility. Every time you get an ability score improvement, you can swap out one cantrip for another, which is nice I guess. Druids have a pretty unique cantrip list. They have stellar ones like Guidance and Shillelagh, and flavorful ones like Druid Craft and Produce Flame. I doubt your cantrip list will change much throughout your career, but if you ever want to give something like, I don't know, Primal Savagery a spin for 4 levels, now you can. The UA version allowed for this exchange to happen much more frequently, being available at every level instead of only on ASIs. I'm not really sure why they changed it, mechanically it's not game breaking at all, but I guess they wanted to preserve the distinction between known and prepared casters. So without further ado, let's talk about the spells. Druids get access to 16 new spells, three of which were introduced in Tasha's. There's a couple of great pickups here, Augury and Divination for example used to be cleric only spells, allowing druids to tap more into their spiritual, shamanistic side. Fire Shield is an awesome spell that used to be wizard exclusive. You'd think it was added specifically for wildfire druids, but they already have it in their personal spell list. Aura of Vitality used to be a paladin only spell, like Aura of Life and Aura of Purity. Both clerics and druids now gain access to this spell 4 levels earlier than paladins, which is definitely a big boost to their healing talents. It's an important reminder that these spells are optional to implement in your game usually offered to fill in the gaps found in a normal sized adventuring party. If your party's missing a paladin, for example, Aura of Vitality is an awesome pickup for a cleric or druid with great healing potential. If you already have a paladin though, you could always disallow your cleric or druid from taking this spell to avoid stepping on the paladin's toes. A big name on this list is Revivify. Cleric used to be the only class that could take this spell at level 5, with druid now joining the ranks. This and Aura of Vitality aid the Druid in better filling a supportive niche, previously dominated by the Cleric, hopefully making Cleric a bit less of a traditionally mandatory party member. Druids get three of the new summon spells, Beast, Fey, and Elemental. These are especially great for Shepherd Druids who can give their summons extra hit points, magical attacks, and healing every turn on top of their own totem benefits. In the UA, Druids had 8 more spells on the expanded spell list. 6 of those cut were from the book Xanathar's Guide to Everything. For the record, all spells from Xanathar's were removed from every class's extended list as they transitioned into Tasha's, likely to lower the book burden for players new to the scene who don't already have a copy of it. This does mean that the spells weren't removed for balance reasons at all, so if you can convince your DM to use the original UA list, it shouldn't cause any problems. Power Word Heal and Acid Splash were the only spells from the player's handbook that were cut, though I couldn't give you any certain reasons why. I guess Acid Splash is reserved for less nature-based classes like Sorcerers, Warlocks, and Wizards, but Power Word Heal, I have no idea. Anyway, that's it for Druid, short and sweet. A ton of fun new spells to try out and a bit of utility to help fill in the gaps in your adventuring party. Wildfire and Stars Druid are stellar new subclass options that I really recommend you give a try if you're looking for a fresh new take on the Druid class. May your familiars always be combat ready, your clerics finally given that much needed vacation, and above all, stay frosty.